Hi LEGO fans! With the release of the LEGO Movie 2 getting closer and closer, LEGO have released a plethora of really cool sets. But none of those sets have been as highly anticipated as this one. Today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building and reviewing the one you've all been waiting for, 70840 Welcome to Apocalypseburg from the LEGO Movie Part 2. This is an epic 3178 piece set aimed at LEGO builders aged 16 plus. I'm pretty sure that's above the target age range for the movie, but I'm definitely going to be buying some tickets. Not only epic in terms of part count, this is also epic in terms of size. Welcome to Apocalypseburg stands over half a metre high, that's about 21 inches. And the width of the set is 49.3 centimetres or 19.4 inches. Once again, we're going to have to clear some display space. The set itself is very eye-catching indeed. This clearly pays homage to the scene in Planet of the Apes where Cholton Heston finds the Statue of Liberty sticking out of the sand. And in a Lego Movie 2 context, this represents the dystopian Mad Max style world that the characters find themselves living in. There's all manner of detail in this set, but I'm sure we'll find out more about that on the back of the box. The back of the box is also a great place to see all of the new for 2019 minifigures that are included in the set. We've got Emmett, Lucy, Batman, Scribble Cop, Harley Quinn, Green Lantern, Where Are My Pants Guy, Larry the Barista, Chainsaw Dave, Mohawk, Roxy and Fuse. As well as revealing the minifigures, the back of the box reveals a lot of the cool detail inside the set. Barry the Brister is once again selling $37 coffee, this time from a coffee shop called Coffee Unchained. We've got a rather gnarly looking surfer dude called Chainsaw Dave. It's somewhat ironic as I'm pretty sure this is in the middle of the desert. It's great to see Harley Quinn making an appearance. We've also got the Green Lantern and a very robust looking Batman. I love that shoulder piece with the tyres. There are some helpful signs to help residents navigate around Apocalypseburg. I'm really looking forward to the sticker sheet. And I believe this is the rooftop diner. Right at the top we've got this very cool lookout tower. That is reached using a series of ladders which extend along Lady Liberty's arm. It looks like Batman, as always, is well equipped with lots of bat tech. Scribble Cop is manning the super secret police office. I'm guessing this might be the Welcome to Apocalypseburg Spa. There's a convenient tattoo parlour for the residents to get new ink. And this looks like Lucy's hideout. This looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to review. I'm guessing it's also going to take a long time to build, so without further ado, let's open up this box and see what we've got inside. everything that came inside the box. We've got 29 bags of Lego numbered for stages 1 through 18. There's an apocalyptic 463 page instruction booklet, more stickers than you could shake an apocalyptic stick at, and a bunch of sand base plates and some rather nice fancy green pieces. My son and I are going to go ahead and construct Welcome to Apocalypseburg and today this is going to be a 3 minute speed build!
And after 5 hours and 46 minutes, here's the completed build. Welcome to Apocalypseburg. This thing is absolutely stunning and I can't wait to show you around. Considering it's a very large set, it's actually quite compact and doesn't take up too much space. That said, this does stand almost 21 inches high and it looks like we're going to need a bigger ruler. I think you just caught me using an illegal build technique. The level of detail in this set is very impressive and I was surprised at how short the build time was. I honestly thought this would take about 8 hours but it took a little under 6. There are also some very cool easter eggs which we're going to see during the video and the 12 minifigures included in the set are absolutely stunning. We'll be taking a look at those towards the end of the video. Without further ado, let's take a look around. Typically with a set like this you would expect to turn it around and find a bunch of rooms inside to play with. This is not the case with Welcome to Apocalypseburg. It's a little bit like a skyscraper where we have a strong central core and accommodation around the outside. The strong central core takes the form of Lady Liberty and supports her very well. As you can imagine there's a fair amount of Technic pieces inside their core building up the support structure. The dystopian city built up around Lady Liberty is actually made up of shipping containers. These form individual units which are themed around the character who lives or works there. There are interior details and in most cases you can remove the roofs to see inside. At the very top of the build we've got Lady Liberty's torch and this really cool lookout platform. The flame itself is an exquisite piece of Lego modelling and resembles the glass torch that Lady Liberty used to hold. If you ever get a chance to go see that at the Statue of Liberty it's really awesome. Speaking of awesome we've got some of those rounded railing pieces. I really like those especially in this green colour. You might recognise this green colour from the original roof colouring of Hogwarts Castle. As with pretty much everything in Apocalypseburg, the platform has been upcycled from old parts. The railings include a set of handlebars recycled from a bicycle and there's even a spear which is probably not the best choice of safety equipment. To reach the platform at the top there are three different ladders ascending Lady Liberty's arm. There's also this rather cool little wind turbine. Taking one more look at that torch I really love the way Lady Liberty's hand wraps around the outside. Like Ninjago City this is one of those sets you can stare at for hours and find something new every time. Certainly the most recognisable aspect of this set is the face of the Statue of Liberty. The real Lady Liberty has a very solemn face but I love the fact that this almost looks like it's smiling. Just look at those green hot dog elements which are used to pick out the shape of the eyes. I'm pretty sure I've not seen them in that colour before. We even have the nose, the lips and a chin that sticks out. Hello, I'm Lady Liberty. Ah! Ok, moving swiftly along we've got Lady Liberty's crown. It's actually possible to visit the crown of the Statue of Liberty but you do have to book tickets many months in advance. You also have to be really fit to climb up all the stairs because there's no elevator. These particularly sharp and pointy looking fins are actually flexible, they are actually quite safe. Lady Liberty does have hair and it comes in the shape of these dreadlock type things. Another really nice feature of the Statue of Liberty is this hidden chill out room inside the head. There's a vantage point where a minifigure can sit and observe the dystopian landscape. You may have noticed that this is designed in a way that can accommodate a mini doll also. Although I'm not sure this was designed with general mayhem in mind. There's a coffee cup tucked away back there. And we also have some really nice art including this plaque depicting the Duplons. And this really cool poster showing the where are my pants guy recreating a scene from Planet of the Apes. Just like the real Statue of Liberty this version is holding a tablet. The tablet on the real Statue of Liberty has the date of the Declaration of Independence. This on the other hand has been repurposed as a platform. I really like the detail here with Lady Liberty's fingers. And then we've got more walkways made out of ladders with interesting handrails. This one for example is using an oar and like the one at the top this one uses a spear. Also tucked away down there we've got a box full of weapons. We've got this very cool pitchfork and a katana. Not all of the framework of the build is hidden and if you look around the back of the set you can see some of the Technic pieces. In fact there's actually quite a deep dark void in the middle of the set. You probably don't want to drop any pieces or minifigures in there. Other features include this little searchlight which I guess you could use to summon Batman. And at the base of Lady Liberty's arm is this little workshop. I think this may be Fuse's workshop. In there we've got a variety of tools, a gas canister and a very fancy looking tool chest. Immediately below the workshop we've got this Batman inspired area. There are some boxes of Bat merch, we're going to see some more of those later. We've even got the Batitude license plate. We've got this very cool basketball hoop with the hoop made out of barbed wire. That is a really cool element. There's a canopy complete with some interesting metallic detail. And beneath the canopy there's some windows complete with broken glass which look like they were repurposed from a railway carriage. 
Here we have the front of a bus which presumably used to run to Brick Square, and there's some more cool artwork. There's a poster of this gnarly looking mohawk guy complete with dumbbell and it looks like the poster's been shot with bullet holes. There's another one of these brown bins containing this trident and for some reason a loaf of bread. And there's a nice little easter egg here inviting us to visit Ninjago City. In fact I recognise that poster because we've got the full size version on my daughter's bedroom wall. You can see that and my complete Lego collection by checking out my studio tour video. Up here we've got a very cool rooftop diner complete with some really nice features. There's a cooking area complete with an oven and a stove top. Inside the oven we've got a leg from one of Lord Business's robots. In fact there's quite a few pieces of robot dotted around Apocalypseburg. It looks like somebody's cooking up some eggs and I really like the deep fat fryer made out of an engine. There's a seating area for one but I'm not sure that hot dog looks very appetising. Signage consists of a burger skewered on a spear and there's a menu showing off the specials for the day. Beneath the rooftop diner there's a room made out of a storage container. To look inside we can remove this convenient roof panel. Inside we find the Apocalypseburg gym. There's a weight bench complete with barbell made out of broom handles and a punch bag that resembles one of the Duplons. I've never seen that round element with the spikes and that is really cool. Over here we have what appears to be the Apocalypseburg spa complete with shower. This appears to be made out of vehicle parts and you can see the license plate. In fact this seems to be built from parts from the Lego system model team giant truck set number 5571. That was released in 1996 and if you have one of those mint in box it's worth about a thousand dollars. There's a part from one of Lord Business's evil robots beneath the wheel arch and up on top we have this bathtub complete with tap and a yellow frog. There's also a shower area complete with soap and bubbles. I really like how the designers have built the shower complete with blue transparent element. Moving around the build I just spotted another container of bat merch and this seems to be some kind of fireplace or oven. There's a random fish and what appears to be a mop. I really like the way this has been made with one of those tassel elements. You might have noticed this plate has some hinges and it's in fact a trapdoor. Underneath we've got the arm from one of Lord Business's robots and a random fried egg. Here we've got another robot part, it's a head complete with mohawk and we've got signs made of skis pointing out the directions to lookout, coffee shop and diner. Holding up the platform that supports Lady Liberty's tablet, I believe that's Chainsaw Dave's camper van. It comes complete with a portable toolbox and whatever that thing on the left is. Off to the side you can see Chainsaw Dave's surfboard rack and then behind the surfboards we've got some gas cylinders. I guess these are providing propane for the coffee shop. This is the most densely populated part of Apocalypseburg and to see inside all of these buildings we're going to have to remove some roofs. So I think it makes sense to start at the top with Lucy's hideout. Mounted above the door we have another one of these robot heads which looks very Terminator-esque. I love the way these guys are wearing mohawks. On the roof we've got a comfortable chair for keeping watch, a convenient bullhorn to make residents aware of any incoming Duplon attacks and there's even a little water tower. One of the side railings is made out of the front of a truck and there's a lamp down below shedding some light on things. The front door to Lucy's hideout is this rather cool looking curtain. It also has a really nice soft fabric. The barbed wire hoop and keep out sign suggests visitors aren't welcome. On the side of the hideout we've got two mailboxes and these do contain hidden items. The top one contains some kind of aerosol canister and in the bottom one we've got a green transparent stud with a minifigure handle. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that's kryptonite. Also nearby is a vehicle part complete with license plate R1DCE. I don't recognise that but maybe it was featured in the original Lego movie. The roof lifts off pretty easily so you can access the features inside. Lucy's hideout is simply furnished. On the far wall we have some pictures showing Emmett and Warrior Kitty. I presume that's Lucy's bed. And we also have the relic finder she used in the first movie. And then on the other side of the room we've got somewhere to store Lucy's binoculars. This is featured in the movie and Lucy uses it to find Emmett's dream house. On the next level down we actually have two modules. The blue building on the left is the armory. This has a really cool swinging door made of pickaxes and there's a really cool panel complete with slot in the middle so you can peek out. And then we've got a sign denoting this as the armory. We'll take a look inside in just a second. Next door there's another space which doubles up as a barber and a tattoo parlour. This is also featured in the movie. Outside we have a rack of newspapers and above the door we've got a pair of scissors. On the other side we've got some more artwork showing a traditional barber's pole and a rather gnarly looking pair of scissors. There is more stuff to check out inside and you can do that by removing Lucy's hideout. Inside the barber shop there's a chair that can be used for either cutting hair or doing tattoos. We also have a welding gun element which makes for a pretty convincing tattoo gun. 
Also in the barber shop we have another two of these mohawk robot heads. And then next door we have the armory. There are cool helmets, a complete robot skeleton complete with Justice League shield, and then we have some interesting weaponry including this axe made out of a shovel, and an interesting looking spear. Finally at ground level we've got the last two modules in Apocalypseburg. This is Larry the Barista's Coffee Unchained. The sign is pretty cool complete with a wheel but I'm not very happy about the stickering which is on two separate pieces. There's more interesting detail on either side of the double doors showing coffee cups complete with schools. Those doors do open and we shall take a look inside in just a moment. There are more stairs which lead up to the armory and the tattoo parlour, but the really interesting thing is the sticker that denotes this as the office of the super secret police. That's kind of ironic. We also have some decals down here and a little lever that looks like it might do something. This is the entrance to Scribble Cop's super secret police office. There's a really cool bad cop decal on the door, and I love the fact that LEGO have used a cell door even though this isn't technically a police cell. Outside on a pole is this public address system, and outside the door is a trash can which contains another one of those robot heads. We can of course look inside by removing the whole upper level. This is the interior to Coffee Unchained which contains a service counter and somewhere to sit. From behind the counter it looks like Larry is still selling $37 coffee. Awesome! The snack selection on the other hand leaves a little bit to be desired. I'd rather take my coffee without rats, thank you. According to the menu, as well as rats and spiders, you can also get chicken legs and croissants. Next door inside Scribble Cop's sparsely furnished office, we've got a wanted poster showing Harley Quinn. You might remember from the first movie that Bad Cop liked to kick around a chair. Yes, the lever you saw outside is used to make Scribble Cop's chair fly into the air. So that's the magnificent welcome to Apocalypseburg. Hopefully I managed to fit in all of the detail. Since I started filming the review, I had an opportunity to see an advanced screening of the Lego Movie 2. Let me tell you, it's awesome. But the other thing that really hit me is how close this is to the real thing in the movie. There's so much really cool detail. But I digress because we've got 12 cool minifigures to take a look at. We've got Emmett, Lucy, Batman, Scribble Cop, Harley Quinn, Green Lantern, where Are My Pants Guy, Larry the Barista, Chainsaw Dave, Mohawk, Roxy and Fuse. Now I don't want to give away too many spoilers but let's just say Apocalypseburg doesn't bring out the best in many of our characters. This is of course Scribble Cop and that face is awesome, I love it. He's also got this really nicely printed uniform on here. I presume this is going to be the same as the original Bad Cop. We've got lots of zippers on there, some really nice metallic printing including some gold printing there for the badge, printing across the waistband and then some more pockets, I guess patches on the trousers here on the pants. On the back we have a really nice print here. This is also on the super secret police office so you will recognize that from Apocalypseburg and then the other nod to this dystopian world is the epaulets here. These kind of spiky epaulets which look really cool and fun. Now the expression on the front is very awesome. We also have another one on the back there. We do have bad cops still on the back of the head there. Really love those shiny aviator sunglasses. Of course bad cop voiced by the magnificent Liam Neeson and then we've got a helmet there I think that is a that is probably dual molded yes I'm pretty sure that's going to be white and black plastic but that is the awesome scribble cop next we have Larry the barista who's undergone quite a makeover as you can see here he's wearing these embellished pants with the metallic things on there and these steel toe cap boots he looks awesome the barista apron here has also been updated for Apocalypseburg as you can see we've got a skull on the coffee mug there and then some kind of skull serviette or something sticking out of the pocket but he does retain his Larry name badge now he has this cool Bane style respirator makes him look very very mean and then those mean eyes he's also got this really really cool mohawk piece that's a kind of squidgy piece of plastic in fact i'm going to take that off uh i don't know why i bothered there's no expression on the back there let's put that back on but i will loosen his head slightly just so we can fully see that facial expression i really like that very gnarly there We've got a scar on the forehead and then this kind of stubbly beardy look 
Okay, with Larry the Barista. I always want to call him Barry, but he is Larry the Barista. We've got him back together. He also has this shoulder piece with the spikes like Scribble Cop. He's got a tattoo there from the tattoo parlor in Apocalypseburg. And then over around the back, it's pretty plain. We've just got the straps or the, uh, I guess the ties there for the Barista apron. He is a very cool minifigure. I really like Larry the Barista. Next, and appropriately dressed for this Mad Max style world, is Fuse. Now firstly you're going to notice some duplication here. If we bring back Larry the Barista, you'll notice they're wearing the same pair of pants. So those aren't unique, I have looked at the print, I'm pretty sure they're identical. But we do have a really nice torso print here. Uh, Fuse is obviously very well muscled, and then he's got this kind of harness with some really nice metallics on there. And if we turn him over, we also have, I see he's got a vest on under there, but you can kind of see the, uh, the contours of his chest and stuff there. Now we also have a tiny bit of metallic on the back there for the buckle, but uh, really nice strap detail. This is obviously a vest because he's got the yellow arms and then gloves. So I'm guessing this is going to be the equivalent of a blacksmith. And of course he has his own, uh, I guess, workshop in Apocalypseburg, which we've already seen. He has this really cool welding mask. I don't recall seeing an element like that before, but I could be wrong. And that is painted with these red flames. Looks really cool. Now if we take that off, we also have a really cool facial expression. I love the moustache there, which is kind of droopy, and then the eye patch. That is a very cool Fuse minifigure. Honey, where are my pants? Yes, this is the where are my pants guy, and he looks very gnarly in this kind of dystopian dress here. He's got this really gnarly war hammer with spikes on there. I'm just going to take that out of the way for a moment. And then, of course, he's wearing no pants, but he is wearing these boots. They look like uh, kind of punk rocker boots with the steel caps, and then this metal work on there. Now he has the uh, the flowery shirt that he wore in the last movie, but then we've got some strapping over the top with some nice metallics there for the buckles, and very, very similar around the back. In fact, really nice metallic printing on these minifigures. He also has one of these shoulder pieces with the, I guess the kind of spikes on there, and then the very, very cool hairstyle. I love that kind of uh, coiffured look where it's all brushed back. Now. In a nod to the original character, we do actually have a much more sheepish, much more normal expression, which is actually really cool, I like that. And that is the where are my pants guy. Next up we have Roxy. She's definitely not one of the main characters in the movie because I didn't see her on screen a lot, but she is a very cool minifigure, especially with all this metallic printing. Now on the pants here, we have uh, these kind of off blue pants and then printed on the front with metallic toe caps again, a little bit of uh, kind of brown, I guess these are ripped pants there. And then we've got cogs, I guess, or gears on the uh, on the torso here. That's going to be a belt. And then she's got this massive uh, metallic panel here and then a big gear around her neck. She also has one of these kind of shoulder pieces, but this is actually just uh, covering one shoulder this time. And we've got a couple of spikes on there. Uh, she's wearing a vest because she's got these yellow arms showing. And then you can see on the back there, we've got the in fact, there's some overprinting on that metallic there. You can just see some of the detail with the rivets and some of the lines on there. And then we've got a few more bits of detail there. Great facial expression. I love the kind of aggressive look there, bearing the teeth. And I really like that headband around the uh, top of the eyes. Now, if I turn around, she does have, I'm gonna say smiley face. It's kind of an awkward smile, but it's quite nice. And then finally, if I can find out which way to go, we have this hair piece with the bun on the back. I don't think that's a new hair piece, but it does complete Roxy. She's a very cool looking minifigure. This is Chainsaw Dave. He's certainly not one of the main characters, but he does get a speaking part in the movie. And he's called Chainsaw Dave because he's got a chainsaw. This is a really cool little, uh, quite simple build, but quite effective. It's obviously a chainsaw. I'm gonna take that away so we can have a look at the printing. We have these kind of Bermuda shorts here, all these surfer shorts, which are quite ripped. And then we've got some really nice flower detail there. And then look at that chest piece. He almost looks like He-Man with all those metallics and almost a skeletal kind of thing in the middle there. Uh, obviously very muscly, lots and lots of metallic detail there. I love the way this kind of crosses the chest. Over on the back there, we have more metallics. Uh, I think that's all silver metallics, but really, really nicely printed detail there. And we do have some tats. We've got a tat there with some metallics in. That's a chainsaw. And on the other side, what do we have here? 
Honestly, I'm not certain. It seems to have fire coming out of it. Almost looks like a spaceship, but um, yeah, really cool tats. And of course, you do see uh, the characters getting tattoos in the movie. He's got his, uh, I guess his surfer dude hair there, very, very bleach blonde and swept. And then this very, very aggressive expression. I mean, most of the characters in Apocalypseburg are quite upset. And there he looks a little bit less upset, but still quite gnarly. And that is one of my favorites I think from this set, that is Chainsaw Dave. Next we have Mohawk with an apostrophe, and I can't imagine why she's called that. She is carrying this thing, I'm really not sure what this is. We've got this kind of dead plant on the end there, and then almost like this flick missile body. Um, I guess you could set fire to it and use it as a torch, but apart from that it's not very exciting. But we do have some nice printing here. We've got these grey pants legs, and then some metallic detail on there. I guess this is just decoration, I can't see anything specific. Around the body, again, like a lot of the other Apocalypse Bergians, we've got many straps around there. Around the back, we've also got a yeah, another strap there with a buckle for doing it up. And it looks like just some kind of, uh, you know, almost like soft body armour. Facial expression is really interesting. I love the kind of war paint over the eyes there, and then a little sly smile. And then, of course, on top, we've got another one of these mohawks. We've seen quite a few of these throughout the set. It's that kind of squishy plastic again. Obviously, no expression on the back there, but that is Mohawk. This is the amazing Harley Quinn, and her costume looks like it was plucked straight out of Suicide Squad. I've not seen the movie, but I've heard enough to know not to go watch it. Really, really nice minifigure this. I'm sure this will be very popular among collectors. She is carrying a baseball bat with actually some really nice printing on there. You can see we've got the uh, metallic metal panels there, and a little bit of black printing as well. Put that down, stop it rolling away. In fact, let's put it in my pocket. That's better, but I digress. Uh, the legs are really, really nicely printed. We've actually got um, dual molded legs with red on the right, or the left, I guess, and blue on the left. And then we have side printing and front printing. She's wearing this kind of uh, fishnet pantyhose or stockings, I guess. And then another metal panel there across her knee. And then, um, I, I guess, panties for a better, want of a better word. We also have the Harley Quinn effect with the, uh, the blue on the right or on the left left and then the red on the right. Yeah, I think I got that right this time. Really nice torso printing there with Daddy's Little Monster. Exactly the same slogan we saw in Suicide Squad. And then if we turn her over, we've got the Harlequin pattern on the back there. It's quite uh, fitting, I guess, that we've got it almost like the Harlequin pattern on the legs here. Great facial expression as always. We've got that white face, red lips, black detailing, and then a splodge of blue. Around the back, we've got a similar expression, but looking very much more mean. And then we get this fantastic hairpiece, which is mostly white. In fact, it's, I don't think it's dual moldy. I think that's gonna be uh, paint for the blue and red detail. But she's got these bunches in blue and red, and Harley Quinn looks amazing. Next, we have the Apocalypseburg Green Lantern, and as you can see, we've got some customizations. We've got these kind of dark green pants here, but with some of the metallic details on there. Got a metal patch on the knee there, and then a metal patch with a skull on. That's very, very cool. Little bit of, I was gonna say a little bit of side printing, but those are actually dual molded legs, which is very nice. We've got another one of these shoulder pieces here with the two kind of, I wanna say horns or spikes. And then hanging down over the other arm here, we've got a, um, what do you call that? That's gonna be like a half cloak, kind of strange arrangement, but that's what it is. Uh, on the front there, we've got the Green Lantern symbol, way too many abs, and then this really cool metallic chain. Turning them over, just a little detail on the back there for the kind of contours of the body, and then really nice kind of vacant expression here. You can't really see his eyeballs, so he looks a little bit unnatural. Uh, very standard haircut here. And then turning them around to the back, we have this very, very cool facial expression. I love this with the mouth open, the tongue showing, just makes him look ever so fun. And that is our Apocalypseburg Green Lantern. 
down to the last three minifigures now, but this has to be the best from the set. This is Batman, and as you can see, he's really beat up his outfit for Apocalypse Berg. I love these shoulder pieces. This is so cool. We've got kind of half tires here on the shoulders, and those are made out of tire material. It's really, really cool. So where do we start? We've got a Batarang. We've seen millions of these before. Uh, we've got a yellow utility belt that just snaps between the legs and the body. Now the pants there have been customised, we've got some more of these metallics here, very goth looking, and then I don't know what this is here, we've got some kind of metallic, almost looks like a cod piece. Now turning him over, it's really really difficult to see. So I tell you what, let's go from the top, we'll have to take a look at the cowl first, which I believe is a standard Batman cowl, no extra printing on there. The facial expression just looks like Batman, very much like the ones we get in the Batman movie sets. And I'm going to pop his head off just so we can have a look at these parts. Now, this is a really big shoulder piece. As you can see here, we've got a tyre on each side uh, to give him that real bulky shoulder action. Uh, kind of jaunty at an angle back there. That almost looks like a classic Batman symbol and nothing on the back there. In fact, there's, yeah, there is a little bit, bit of detail. Now, this is kind of hard plastic, and then we've got the tire material bonded onto the outside, so it's a really nicely manufactured piece, and I'm sure this is going to become quite collectible. Going back to Batman, who's lost his head. Let's pop that back on. There we go. Get his dignity back. Now, we have a really nicely printed torso. Lots of strapping on here, like uh, many of the other characters. Uh, you can see his amazing abs. And then we've got some more metallics there. And now we can get to the back. We've got this kind of uh, back piece here with some more buckles. And then a really nice, uh, I guess, dystopian cape. This is uh, kind of shredded, but it is that nice soft material, which I like to stroke. And that really is the very cool Batman. I'm just gonna bring this piece back in. That is my favorite piece. I mean, that's so cool for a minifigure. Next we have Warrior Lucy, who also appears in set number 70827, Ultra Catty Warrior Lucy, which is on my to review pile. She is a very, very cool looking figure, and obviously very different to the Lucy we're used to seeing. Starting at the bottom, we've got these dual molded legs, which come in brown and black, and then some really nice printing on the front there. Again, loads and loads of metallics, because that's the uh, Apocalypseburg thing. She is carrying a crossbow, which is a, I think that's a fairly standard Lego crossbow, although I don't recognize that piece on the front. I could be wrong. Anyway, carrying on. Looking at that face and that headgear, that is so awesome. We've got obviously Lucy's hair, which is black with the stripes in there, although I'm not going to give away a spoiler. You guys will know soon enough. And then these red goggles on top there, those look very, very cool. I'm going to take that off so we can take a look at that expression, which is very, very mean indeed. And then a little bit more neutral around the back. Also, while we're around the back, you can see she's wearing a quiver there for the uh, crossbow bolts. And then generally underneath, she's just wearing her pretty standard wild style top there. It would be a hoodie. I'm not gonna take all of this stuff off, but I'm sure there's a, a hoodie print back there somewhere. In fact, I'm gonna take it off because you know what? There isn't. And actually the contours of Lucy's body look uh, very much slimmer than they did on uh, previous versions of the minifig. Now, let me see if I can put this back together real quick. Okay, there we go. I think I've probably put this thing on upside down, but we're gonna run with it anyway. Um, apart from what you've seen already, it's pretty much a standard wild style when it comes to the body. Uh, we've got printing on both of the arms, which looks very cool. And then some really nice printing on the front there. That is our warrior Lucy and a great minifigure for Apocalypseburg. And finally, we have the obligatory Emmett minifigure that you're gonna see in most of these sets. He is carrying a $37 coffee, courtesy of Larry the Barista, and I think this is a new coffee cup element. I've certainly not seen that before. It's a single molded piece. No printing, unfortunately. I like to see printing on coffee mugs, but we do have a cutout there on the top for sipping coffee, and I'm sure he'll enjoy every single sip of his $37 coffee. Apart from that, this is pretty much a very standard Emmett minifigure. You're going to see lots of these in the Lego Movie 2 set. And as you can see, he's a little bit distressed. Those stripes would have been perfect in the Lego Movie. Now in the Lego Movie 2, we've got some uh, some kind of tears, I guess, on there. And also some, uh, some detailing on the belt to suggest some distress. 
You also get the same thing in the back there. You can see these very reflective stripes, uh, but those are all banged up, which of course the original Emmett wouldn't have been. The expression looks very, very standard for Emmett. And if we turn him over, I'm 99% certain that's the same expression we got with the Thricycle. I do have a review for that online, so do go check it out. And that is the Emmett minifigure, finishing up our minifigure selection for Welcome to Apocalypseburg. So that was set number 70840, Welcome to Apocalypseburg from the Lego Movie 2. This is an absolutely amazing set brimming with imagination. And to be quite honest, it should be amazing because at $300, this is a lot of money to spend on a Lego set. I'm not sure it deserved the 16 plus rating as it wasn't too complicated to build, but you're certainly gonna have to have the earning power of 16 plus to be able to buy one of these. The level of detail in the set is very, very good and really does justice to the version from the movie. Nobody's paying me to say this, but if you enjoyed the Lego movie, you'll really enjoy the Lego movie part two. Overall, this is a really fun set and I love the minifigure collection. There's also some really cool elements and it's a true credit to the Lego design team. I've got quite a few other LEGO Movie 2 sets to review, so if you like this theme, you're in luck. I'm also right at this moment working on a feeling guide and review of all the LEGO Movie 2 collectible minifigures. That's coming out in a few days, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out. I really hope you enjoyed this Welcome to Apocalypseburg unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like down below and feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks a million for checking out Welcome to Apocalypseburg with me, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.